Can we talk a little bit about your toy collection? I remember not too long ago you showing me an image of your Star Wars collection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we cut to the photo. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I have some Star Wars stuff, but you have like I, have a I think a dream collection. Yeah, I've been, I've always enjoyed I've always enjoyed those toys. I think that was very much from my childhood was growing up with those Kenner figures and I think a lot of my first job I ever had was working at a used toy store called Kit called Play by Play. You worked at a used toy store? Yeah, like that I didn't have I was a poor kid and I didn't have money, so like I didn't even get paid. Like that I would get toys. Like I would just like Essentially, they she would get a box of GI Joes. This lady and she would go, I don't know what this is, and I'd be like, I got it. <laughs> Amateur. <laughs> Why and do I would you like sort everything, store? put all the weapons with them, and then she'd be like, You could take a couple home, and I would just be like, Well, no one's gonna buy this Storm Shadow. <laughs> like, <laughs> keep it for myself. Um, I was a shyster. I was like an eBay toy scammer at the age of eight. <laughs> oh my god, that's incredible. Yeah, I was a weird little kid, but yeah, I I enjoyed those. Toys. I don't think you know. We didn't have a babysitter. It was a, uh, it was He Man. Can we also talk a little bit about your work with the Muppets? Talking yeah. about like such a marketable franchise. Um, uh, I, I have also had a chance to work with the Muppets, but you actually work with the Muppets, which are basically to me like these living creatures that look like the most cool, like fabricated, like the design and the toys. I mean, yeah. The, the, that that alone, that, that's the most vivid memory I have of anything I've ever performed is standing on stage singing Rainbow Connection with all of the Muppets. At and the Paul Hollywood Williams. Bowl. Yeah, that was, that, that, I can't erase that from my brain. Seeing all the Muppets together singing is, is five feet away from you. Is, is If you ever get a chance, you should do it. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, I'm about to drop acid <laughs> after this. Yeah, so you'll uh, say. Do you own any, like, cool Muppet paraphernalia or anything from... I have a lot of, like, I kept a lot of the props from, like, that show. Um, I have a lot of, like, actual Muppets. Like, yeah. yeah what? Yeah, I have some real Muppets at home. What do you mean? I have a like... Gonzo Muppet. I have, uh, I have a couple Muppets at home. You don't. You could speak proudly about that. I have, have Muppets be... at home. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. I first, just don't want but... people to come to my home and take them. That's that's, that's true. We can't we can't <laughs> give out the address because if people knew I had a Muppet at my house, uh, it would be over. Uh, F.A.O. Schwartz did a uh, 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 a whatnot like. Kind yeah, of... I got a bunch of those. <laughs> a yeah. bunch? I got oh, one. Yeah. I made one. I was nerdy enough to make one. I think and we it have was three. Of your likeness, you made three of you, or did you just create? I didn't really make my likeness. They didn't have like beards. Like what? <laughs> I think I just made like a nice blue guy in a suit. I made one for my mom. I don't think she wanted it. I think I wanted it. <laughs> I think uh, you. You're like me. You give people stuff that you want. That's true. Selfish, they call them. Yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with it? Give it back to me. Yeah. And just, then I'll take you, it. You off. don't like it? That's weird. I guess I'll take it. Would you ever part with your toy collection? That's funny. A couple years ago, no. Now, yes. After having a kid, it changed everything. I, I was collecting because it was something to do and it was something I enjoyed. And now that I have a kid, it seems rude. <laughs> it seems like, why am I continuing to get this stuff to look at when I could be saving money or helping my daughter's future. Right. And it really did have a change. Right. It really did. Um, it doesn't change the fact that I still bought a, a Gonzo, a full-size Gonzo recently, <laughs> but I've been buying a lot less since she was born. Uh, anything precious that you've ever owned that you let your kid open? So oh, that happens all the time in my house. But But it's like, it's now I'm at the point where it's I'm okay with it. But I have like a lot, I have a few like priceless things that I think, like I'm proud that I have that nobody else has. Like I, that's fun to me. Yeah. To have those kind of things. But my daughter has been like, what's this? And just ripped open something. And I'm like, yay, that was your college tuition. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talking about marketability and like uh, 
the evils, the pros, the cons. I mean, you had a character on SNL, Drunk Uncle. Here with his advice on how to manage the holidays, please welcome Drunk Uncle. <laughs> it's, uh, it's great to be here hosting Saturday Night Fever. Okay. And they right. actually made merchandise. Yeah. They had a bacolet char instead of chocolate bars, what they called it. <laughs> That's did right. Did you ever see that? Did I you? did, yeah. It was like a, yeah. How does that make you feel like something that came from your soul is now on the shelf and it is for purchase and... That was, it was crazy. Uh, the one that got me was the Funko Pops because like... They had a Drunk Uncle Funko Pop? Yeah, and it's like, see, like it was like they released some SNL ones, so it's like, it was that. That was the reason because it's like... Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana, the cheerleaders, the Butabi brothers, yeah. uh, Stefan, uh, and Drunk Uncle, and there's a couple other in there, but like to be in that group of those things broke my brain. Right. Because like I, you grow up with those legends, and then to see your thing, that your dumb thing that you made up at five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> standing next to it. It's crazy. It's being mass produced on an assembly line box. Yeah, there was a couple like Drunk Uncle bottle openers that talk when you when you used them, and <laughs> there was like, yeah, there was a couple like weird Drunk Uncle things, and it's always that's always super bizarre. There's hundreds of thousands of We Bear Bears products, right? But not in America. Let's talk about the, yeah. the juggernaut and success of We Bear Bears in a, in a merchandise aspect. Yeah. So you say it's like, it was like... In America, it's a great show. Uh -huh. In ac Across the Seas, I believe it's Thailand, it's like, it has taken over. They have, they have uh, Wee Bear Bear's boba shops. They have them in Happy Meals there. Like, and it's... it's Funko Pop is one thing, but to be in a Happy Meal toy, you've... you've, you've I'm going to say yourself. something that's, that is awful, and I don't know if you're going to use it for this. I, I've bought uh, Wee Bear Bear's, like, suntan lotion, all these crazy products. And I bought on eBay um, uh, Wee Bear Bear's uterus warmers. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what it is. It just said uterus warmers on it. You know how... And I bought it immediately because <laughs> it existed. Hey, guys. If you like more of the behind-the-scenes stuff and extended interviews, then we have just what you're looking for right here. Check out these videos right around here. And be sure to hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned.